So this is uh, another dem demonstration of a gyroscopic flywheel. And this is actually part of uh, your first year uh, lab experiment. So uh, when you guys come back, uh, you will be doing this one. So it will be interesting to uh, make some observations uh, from this demo, try to find out certain values, and then uh, if you are interested, compare your observations with the real life experiment when you are back in the campus and when you have to do this as part of your course. Okay. So now what we have here is we have a, uh, well, a spinning wheel uh, which can uh, spin around this axis, uh, axis of the rod. And in this setup, uh, the wheel is actually balanced by a counterweight uh, at the pivot point, right? So that the system, even if stationary, in the sense that there is no rotation motion of the wheel, the system can be balanced about this pivot point, right? So, and uh, I have an angular scale here uh, from which I can see uh, or I can try to move this mass and balance it uh, exactly horizontally uh, uh, along the uh, direction of the rod. Okay. Now, uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll just make a couple of uh, observations, right? Uh, and then uh, we will we will try to understand them in terms of the theory that we are trying and that we are uh, discussing. Okay. So uh, okay. So let me first just give it a spin, right? So normally what I can do is I can just spin it by hand, right, and leave it here, right. And of course you can uh, we will we'll see what kind of uh, effects we are interested in, right? However, spinning by hand does not give it a lot of uh, I mean a high uh, is, uh, angular speed and uh, consequently not a very large angular momentum which is typically required for seeing these things seeing these effects right so we have another way it just like your uh, toy top right you coil a spring around this and then when i pull i can actually give it very large speed and one of the observations that now one can make is uh, Looking at the video, can you sort of uh, estimate what is the angular speed of this flywheel, right? Anyway, uh, so uh, first step, the entire setup was aligned horizontally because it's nicely balanced at the pivot point. So without any motion, it remains in the same line. I have given it a relatively larger spin. And now also it stays in the exact same point. If you have any other observations, just note them down and then maybe we can discuss these. Okay, so th that's our uh, uh, starting point or that's our, let's say, zeroth state where we see that there is no unknown effect or there is nothing out of ordinary uh, in this kind of system, right? So. Uh, 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 this kind of a balanced uh, uh, flywheel or a gyroscopic uh, system, you give it any kind of spin and it still maintains the same nature. Okay, let me just stop it. Okay. Again, balance it nicely here. Right. And now I'll again give it a good spin. And just to like to have the same initial conditions, I'll just balance it here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to disturb the mass distribution, right? And the way we do it is using this small uh, 10 gram mass element. So its total weight is about 10 grams. And I'm going to put it well a bit carefully at the other end. And now you should just see what happens to the system.
here at this point because the wheel has turned by about 180 degrees you can see that angular scale which lets me align it horizontally And uh, if you look at this, I have another I have another angular scale just to tell me or uh, to let me measure how much is the angular rotation, and I can see that now it has already come to a full circle. Right? Okay. Now anyway, this is something. Uh, the last uh, effect that we have that we have seen is because of the experimental constraint, so we don't have to worry about it right now. Let me do this again, right? And maybe also. Uh, in, in the second time, I'll also talk about the effects that we are interested in. Right? However, I'll again encourage you to make your own observation right? and try to note them down that what you find out of ordinary that needs explanation. Right? So a spinning wheel aligned horizontally remains in that same position even after we spin, when we change the mass distribution, that means now basically the slightly larger mass on this side compared to the flywheel mass, that the pivot point, it's not completely balanced and there is a torque on the system uh, acting uh, about this pivot point because the mass is slightly larger here. So the forces are not exactly the same, right? And because of that torque, because that's the only new thing that we have introduced. What we see is the rod still remains aligned with the horizontal direction, right? I mean, of course, not so in the horizontal plane. However, so it doesn't tilt. However, it starts making a new kind of rotation motion above the pivot point, right? And uh, in the next step, I'll spin the flywheel in the opposite direction to see if the direction of the spin also has an effect on the uh, the direction in which the rod starts to rotate when we uh, change the mass distribution or when we give a when there is a torque. Okay. Another thing that one can notice is as the as the rod starts to uh, move around, it also starts to tilt. Right. So this is something that uh, I mean if you have got it down, good. Uh, otherwise, this is a real effect. Right. And uh, there has to be explanation behind it. Uh, which uh, I will leave for you to think about. Okay. And of course, it has some uh, uh, angular, uh, uh, angular speed for this motion and some angular speed for this motion. Of course, if I remove this mass, then the rod stops to move. I will show this again. The rod stops to rotate and uh, maintains in the same orientation. So let's just see that effect. That what happens if I remove the mass while the rod is making this slow angular rotation. So again, let's give it a good spin. Align it horizontally. So nothing happens. I'll attach the mass carefully and you can see that it starts to rotate. And now let's say it has tilted by some amount. At this point, if I'm careful enough to lift this mass, now you can see that the motion or that angular motion actually stops. Okay? And uh, I can just wait for the wheel to slow down substantially just to make sure that nothing else happens. At this point, what we can do is, I mean, if you are actually convinced that the rod is actually not moving anymore, that slow motion, I can again try to change the mass balance and you can start seeing its effect in terms of 
rotation or revolution of this rod about the pivot point. See at after a certain point of time, it also starts to tilt because the forces are not balanced. So that has to have an effect. However, that effect does not seem to occur instantaneously. Rather, it is probably dependent on uh, well, the either the spin, angular speed of the disc, uh, or something else in this. Uh, Okay, let's uh, wind this demonstration up by just seeing the same thing in the other direction and for that, uh, I'm not really sure how am I going to do that because probably I don't have uh, enough uh, space on the other side. So let us just try this. But anyway. What you are trying to do is you are trying to spin it in the other way around. Seems like saying that this spin direction changes is not same as actually changing the spin direction because then one has to worry about how we are going to do this. So now let me just try to give it a spin in the other direction. Okay, so maybe not that fast, but still I've given it a spin in the other direction. I'll just align it here. So now it's again maintaining its okay, position, it's going in the other direction. And let me just pan this mask ever so slightly so that it doesn't disturb the system much. And if you can see the change in effect or the effect because of changing the spin direction, right? That's it. That's the whole uh, well, I mean, that's a major part of rigid body dynamics that we are trying to understand. And uh, uh, another thing that one can appreciate is before actually understanding what this angular momentum was or what are these rotational uh, aspects, right? Uh, when actually the first time people started looking at these effects, they do seem like something out of uh, very um, something uh, out of magic, right? And uh, because there was no explanation that why this is happening, and the uh, the state of uh, uh, mechanics was not at that time was not able to explain these new form effects, right? And as soon as I remove this mass, well, that slow rotation stops. Okay, so this is up to for you. You can uh, replay it and you can try to see more effects. You can try to see what are the experimental uncertainties in this. So which effects are because of uh, the, experimental, uh, the experimental uncertainties and uh, from our discussion on this topic, you can uh, try to also understand which effects are the real ones.